Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander viewers are warned that the following program may contain images and voices of deceased persons. The first story will never go away because without the first story, there's no story. My name's Walter Maguire, Jr., named after my dad. I'm one of seven in my family. Well, first and foremost, I'm a young man. Stand here as West Australian as well. We're in a very significant spot here. The place is known to us as Kakarup. We're just not far from the birthing place of my ancestors. So we're sitting pretty much on country. Walter Maguire is a respected Noongar elder. He grew up in Calabaran, 300 kilometres east of Perth. He's passionate about sharing his culture and now passes on his knowledge as a local Aboriginal tour guide. This is our learning environment, this is our classroom. You've got to be under these trees. This is where you feel the true spirit of Australia. I've been blessed with my knowledge in my Aboriginal culture through my mum and dad and the old people, and I'm also a university graduate as well. When I was doing my degree at Curtin University, I had to research somebody's story. So I interviewed my mother. My eldest brother had gone to Guildford Grammar. The very first time we dropped my brother off at Guildford, and we drove all the way back to Kilburn. So it's a two hour journey. My mother cried all the way. And that stuck in my mind. My mother was born at uh, New North Shea Mission, um, at a little cottage there on the, on the veranda. She was taken away a couple of times uh, by, the, by the government. And that was then I found out that she was a stolen generation. Walter said his mother wouldn't send another son away. That fear led them back to Perth for the family to be together in the late 1970s. But despite his mother's attempts to protect him, Walter says he had to face racism head on. Did you come up against any of that as a young man? Nah, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> no, all the time. All the time. Um, even at senior high, the principal at the time, he said, oh, my dad enrolled us. He said, oh, what do you boys like at sports? Dad said, well, my boys try their best, you know. And, uh, he said, oh, well, we've got better sportsmen than your sons. Dad smiled and looked at him. Okay, then we'll, we'll see, we'll see. So uh, my first year there, I won Open Champion Boy, beat all the fifth years, and in fifth year, won it again. In my final year, I was selected as the head boy by all my peers. The headmaster decided in his wisdom that it would affect my studies. He didn't want an Aboriginal person, very first Aboriginal person to be head boy of his school while he was uh, the principal. There was a big outcry from the students. This is just one of the experiences Walter shared with me as we sat on country in Kings Park. His mission now is to help others understand the rich history of the first Australians. When we welcome people, we welcome the good spirit of people till the bad spirit to go away because it has no place here. With our services as Go Cultural Aboriginal Tours, we provide that opportunity for people to get that learning as we want them to learn. And it's from a, it's our stories, from our perspective, it's the truth, uh, there's research uh, with references, and we also um, you know, encourage people to ask questions. In a safe environment. As he welcomes people from all walks of life to country, every tour, every event, he sees the crowd before him as one. We're one race, the human race. And yet in our language we say, Australians. So what we say, and when we translate that, 
We say there are cultures and languages where the lands of those languages are from over the seas. We are all here. We're part of that human race, many, many cultures, many, many languages, all Australians from this day always.